Story time with Miss Lauren. Today we're going to read the story of Ferdinand. This is a classic. And the pictures are not colorful. They're actually black and white because this story is pretty old. But it's a really good story. I think you'll like it. Once upon a time in Spain. Spain is a whole nother country. There was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under the cork tree. It was his favorite tree, and he would sit in the shade and smell the flowers. He's a very calm bull, isn't he? Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you go run and play with all the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him sit just there and be happy. <clears throat> As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. And over here on the tree, there's a measuring. Measurements. One week, three months, Ferdinand at one year, Ferdinand at two years. Wow, he looks very strong, too. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked for the fight at the bullfights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men in very funny hats came to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bull fights of Madrid. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting and leaping and jumping so the men would think they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew what that they wouldn't pick him, so he didn't care. He went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting, and instead of sitting in the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Uh -oh. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him, and that's just what this bee did to Ferdinand. Uh-oh. Ouch! And wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting and butting and pawing in the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him, and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest, fiercest bull of all. Just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was! Flags were flying high, bands were playing.
and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the bandoliers with their long sharp pins and their ribbons on them to stick the bull and make him mad. Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and had long spears to stick the bull and make him madder. Then came the matador. The proudest of all, he thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. Then came the bull, and you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and the Banderillos were afraid of him, and the Picadores were afraid of him, and the Matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran out into the middle of the ring, and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought they were going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick him with his horns. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in the lovely lady's hair. And he just sat down quietly to smell them. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the Bandelios were mad, and the Picadores were madder, and the Matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off his cape and sword. Uh-oh. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he's sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. And he is happy. The end.